In the single stage residual income model, we will assume that the residual income will grow at a constant growth rate every year. And this will happen and go on until perpetuity. So in this model, we have the intrinsic value V0 equals to the book value per share currently, which is B sub zero, and then we'll add in the PV of all the residual income. And what you will notice here is, of course, in the first year, we have the residual income in year one. And then for year two, we'll take the residual income in year one, and then we will apply a growth rate G, and then we'll do that every year. So we will do this until infinity or to perpetuity, and then we'll discount all of this uh, residual income by the cost of equity for each year. So this will then be illustrated through this timeline where we have B0, okay, in at time zero, and then we have the residual incomes for each year, and every year the residual income will grow at a uh, one plus G factor. Now, we can summarize this sum or series okay uh, as ri1 which is the residual income in year one over r minus g so this will be a very convenient formula for us to summarize up all these values now we can express the residual income in year one in terms of roe minus r and then we multiply by the current book value per share so of course if the roe is equals to r then the the term will be equal to zero so that leaves the uh, intrinsic value equals to the current book value. So just to illustrate that, so if ROE is equals to R, uh, is equals to R, then uh, this whole term will be zero. So V zero will just be equals to B zero. Okay, but if ROE is greater than R, okay, that means we expect the company to generate more returns than what is required. Then the intrinsic value will be greater than the book value per share. Okay, and if the ROE is less than R, then in this case, uh, the second term here will be negative, so V0 will be less than the current book value per share. Now let's look at this example. We have Oregon Coast uh, current book value per share uh, as $10, okay, so that's B0, $10. And the ROE is expected to be 15%. The expected growth rate in uh, residual income is 4%, and the required return on equity is 12%. So based on that, calculate the intrinsic value of Oregon Coal using the single stage residual income model. So using the formula earlier, so V0 is equal to B0 plus uh, ROE minus R times uh, the initial book value over R minus G. So our book value is $10. So plus, uh, this is 15%, 0 0.15 minus 0 0.12 multiplied by $10. And then we'll divide by the required return, 12% minus the growth of uh, 4%. Okay, so that will give us, so for the second term, this will be equals to 3.75. So this 3.75 here summarizes the PV of all the future residual income from year one onwards. So our intrinsic value for Oregon Core will be $13.75. Now, another thing to note here is that if I if we assume that the current market price reflects the intrinsic value, okay, so we'll set P0 equals to V sub 0. So we will then convert this into a multiple. So we'll divide both sides by the current book value per share. So that gives us 1 plus ROE minus R over R minus G. Now, this is what we call the justified price to book multiple. And it gives us a certain insight into what drives the price to book multiple. So of course, if your ROE is equals to R, uh, in this case, the second term will be equals to zero, and hence the price to book ratio should be equals to one. Okay, so in other words, if we note that a company's price to book ratio is equals to one, then the market perceives that the company uh, will just generate sufficient returns to cover for required return. But if the ROE is greater than R, that means the company will have value added uh, activities. So the price to book ratio will be greater than one. And of course, if the company uh, implements projects which are not value adding or doesn't uh, compensate for the required return, then the price to book ratio will be less than one. Now, of course, if you simplify this formula, uh, this will become ROE minus G over R minus G. So this is uh, the justified price to book multiple formula that you will see in uh, the reading on market-based uh, approach. Okay, so these two formulas are actually the same. 
So of course, other things that we can uh, note here is that if R becomes larger, okay, so when R increases, the price to book ratio will decrease. Okay, and of course, if the growth rate increases, then the price to book ratio should increase as well. Now let's do this example again for Oregon Call with the same numbers, uh, but this time let's calculate the justified price to book multiple. So using the formula earlier, so this is uh, 1 plus ROE minus R over R minus G. So my ROE is 15% minus uh, the required return 12% over 12% minus 4%, uh, right? So this will give us uh, 1 plus 0 0.375. So that gives us 1.375. Now, because the ROE is greater than R, therefore the price to book ratio, uh, the, price, uh, the justified PB multiple is actually greater than one.